benefits become everything that God has prepared and ordained for us, and that is a prosperous, beautiful continent with beautiful people that are running their own economies. We have the capacity to, and this week I'm so excited because we begin to speak on the mountain of education, a very, very integral mountain, and I'm going to talk a little about that just now, but I want to welcome you to 52 Days of Rebuilding the Walls of Africa. This is Dr. Tich Tanyaniwa, and let's have a great time together. Invite somebody right now, child somebody to say it's time for us to empower ourselves and understand what it means to make a difference as we pray for our different countries in Africa and pray for Africa from Cape to Cairo thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the studio and thank you for welcoming me into your home let's have some great time together as we pray together today we're praying for Sao Tome uh, Principe a very interesting and principe a very interesting apicalego uh, combination of islands which is uh let's read out some facts here and discover this great uh, country and then we're going to pray for them sao tome and principe are two volcanic islands located in the gulf of guinea on the western equatorial coast of central africa the country one of the smallest in Africa consists of the two archipelagos uh, around the two main islands, Sao Tome and Principe, about 140 kilometers apart and about 250 kilometers from northwestern coast of Gabon. The country is also, fo is also formed by smaller islands named Rollers, Karoko, Pedras, and Tinchosas. The official name is Democratic Republic Sao Tome and Principe, and leader is Pre President Manuel Pinto de Costa. Capital city is Sao Tome City, and the area is 964 square kilometers. That's a very small um, country right there. Uh, population is 211,028 people in 2018. And around 90% of these people are living in Sao Tome. Uh, independence from Portugal was in 1995 when they became, 1975, uh, pardon me, and Principe became autonomous in 1995. Currency is the Dobra, Main language is Portuguese, Portuguese-based um, other Creole foreign languages as well. Ethnic groups is quite a number of them, including uh, Mestico, uh, Angolares, Foros, Servias, Tongas, and Europeans, primarily Portuguese and Asians, mostly from China. Religion is 97% Christian and 3% Islam. The economy, very important component, that's why we always emphasize the economies of the country because we're working on birthing a mega economy. If you have not read my book, Birthing a Mega Economy, I'd encourage you go to our website, birthingamegaeconomy.africa and download yourself a copy of this book and it will be a blessing to you. Great book and it'll empower you in many areas. Let's speak about the economy of this great country. The economy of Sao Tome and Principe, while traditionally dependent on cocoa, is experiencing considerable changes due to investment in the development of its oil industry uh, in the oil-rich waters of the Gulf of Guinea. Real GDP grew uh, by an estimated 4% in 2019 on the back of improvements in agriculture, construction, and services. The service ex sector experienced 70% growth with a strong performance in uh, wholesale retail trade and in restaurants, hotels, which benefited from the growing tourism in the area. 
and real GDP growth is projected to be around 4% in 2020 and to rebound to 5.1% in 2021. Tourism, which contributes to 32.9% of the GDP, is currently one of the main sources of foreign exchange um, in the country and it is expected to continue to benefit from tourism and uh, the tourism development strategy which was launched in 2018. Um, agriculture out, uh, agricultural output is expected to increase following the building of greenhouses and the improvement of farming and husbandry. So there is development from an agricultural perspective which is beautiful and which also contributes to the increase of their GDP and I think that's really a good lesson for us right across Africa using every means possible to increase our GDPs um, mainly through agriculture because uh, over 70% of Africa is agro-based at the moment. Agricultural products will be cocoa, coconuts, uh, palm kernels, copra, cinnamon, pepper, coffee beans, uh, coffee, banana, papayas, beans, and poultry and fish. Export commodities mainly cocoa, copra, coffee, and palm oil. Education. Although the country has achieved universal primary education, the system faces challenges with respect to efficiency and quality of education and governance. So that's one of the areas of prayer for, um, for, uh, for the beautiful countries here, Sao Tome and Principe. And, um, in this, the government has also been working to offer quality higher education integrated and adapted to the needs of the labor market uh, of the country, and also focusing to implement training and high-level training policy for teachers and other education officials to address the quality and efficiency of education in uh, Sao Tome and Principe. Interesting facts, the islands of Sao Tome are named uh, after St. Thomas uh, by the Portuguese explorer who happened to arrive on the island uh, on the day of the feast, St. Thomas's feast. The, island, the islands are home to a number of different plants, birds, including the world's largest sunbird and the world's smallest uh, ibis. Uh, there were, however, there are, however, no lions, no tigers, or deadly uh, spiders or snakes on the island. So if you, have, um, if you have arachnophobia, that's a good place to go. You won't find any spiders there. You'll be very, very safe and uh, enjoy yourself. The rich volcanic soil and close proximity to the equator of, made Sao Tome and Principe ideal for sugar cultivation, followed by later uh, cash crops such as coffee, cocoa, and is a lucrative plantation economy was heavily dependent upon um, uh, things, uh, uh, slaves that were imported from Africa. The various activities for tourists include diving, snorkeling uh, in uncharted waters, endless tracks, uh, biodiverse jungles, exploring fishermen's villages, plenty of seafood, fresh fruits, uh, chocolate uh, are available here. So if you're one of those that love chocolate or seafood, that's a good place to go for your honeymoon or your holiday. A very interesting formation called the Picacao Grande is a volcanic plug. Um, uh, Plug Peak, shaped like a needle. You'll see interesting pictures online if you Google that, and you'll be able to see what God has done. And it is uh, formed when magma solidified on the vent of an active volcano, and it reached 370 meters in height above the terrain that surrounds it and the mountain range um, where it belonged does not exist anymore. Ah, interesting geography is taking place the scenario the scenery is changing but now it is quite a beautiful agricultural area but you see the the picture of that peak looking beautiful now like I mentioned one of their major areas is improving the quality of education. I have noticed with all the countries that we have done and we're on day I think what we are on day 30. 
What day are we on? 37. Out of all the countries that we've done in these 37 days, you see the, the big difference between the quality of education and the quality of life. You're able to manufacture, produce more, have greater stability in your economies based on the quality of education that you're giving to the people or the access to education that the people have. So I want to encourage us. Let's continue to pray for Africa. Let's pray for our education system right from preschool all the way to tertiary education, that we will have education that is relevant and contemporary to meet the needs of our continent. But let's take a minute right now to pray uh, for Principe and um, Sao Tome. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Sao Tome and Principe. We pray for their president. We pray for their leaders. We pray, Father, for uh, the, the, the government and those in authority, according to your word in Timothy, that when we do, we will lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. We pray, Father, for economic reformation and revival. That will begin to see a maximum use of agricultural, agricultural land and resources. That will see, Father, a reformation of ideas and strategies that will maximize the resources of the land in the name of Jesus and a boost even further of tourism as more tourists come in and increase in their, in their foreign currency reserves in the name of Jesus. In empowering the people to increase the quality of their education in the name of Jesus. Thank you for revival, reformation, and transformation of the economy of Sao Tome and Principe in the name of Jesus. Praise God. God is at work in Africa. All the islands, all the mainland countries, the ones that are landlocked, the ones that are on the, on the coast, God is at work in Africa from Cape to Cairo and beyond. Let's thank God continually for what God is doing in leadership changes, raising up new leaders that are empowered. Now, I want to go, we're going to go into our section of speaking on the mountain of education, and we have a great guest in studio, right here in the studio today, and we're going to have a great time. But I want you to watch this one-minute clip of a very, very significant uh, leader in Africa, a man who has become a, probably one of the leading voices when it comes to uh, Pan-Africanism and the reformation of the African uh, continent. And I believe that he'll really, uh, this is none other than Professor Lumumba from Kenya. He will inspire some thinking in line with the conversations that we are having. So watch this little clip and then we'll have our guest coming into studio and we're going to have a great time. Battles are to be fought in that area. And let me put this very bluntly. When the former leader of, um, of uh, uh, Portugal, Marcelo Caetano, was asked, why can you not allow the colonies to gain independence? This is what he said in substance. As I have examined world history over the years, the following have emerged. That the Caucasians have been responsible for, for monumental discoveries in the development of man. So have the Chinese, so have the Arabs. But the Africans have been responsible for nothing. They are only fit as hewers of wood and drawers of water. And I want to submit to you who are present here that in the conceptual West and guarded moments, or guarded moments, that is what they think. And that is how they relate to Africa. So the whole idea that they will interfere is something that they think is their God-given duty. Wow. Well, praise God, as you have been learning for these last, uh, I think we're on almost 50 days now, we're really coming to the end of our 52 days of rebuilding the walls of Africa. You've learned over all these days that Africa is a beautiful continent endowed with so many amazing resources and every country has something special. We are really honored and graced by the Lord to be born and living in Africa, the most blessed continent. But right now, as we continue to look at the mountain of education, we have an expert in in studio. So I'm really honored for this guest to come through because he's 
probably of all the people I know, one of the most passionate about the subject of education and particularly focusing on young people, their safety and their well-being. This is none other than he is a pastor. So this is Pastor Zamani Njovu, one of our pastors in our church and a leader and a voice right across Africa. So let's welcome to our studio today, Pastor Zamani, please come through. Merahut. How are you doing, sir? Fine, fine. Thank welcome, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Please make yourself comfortable. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it's good to have you. It's good to be here. Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. This this is so exciting because I've always wanted to have an interview just to discuss some of the amazing work that you have been doing uh, over the years. Uh, I've known you for, I think, is it what? Oh. 19, what? 18, 19, over 20, over 20 years. Over 20. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's over 20 years. From the time when you were um, a practicing educator, mm -hmm. and then you left education and got into the marketplace, and that's what you've been doing uh, all these years, and that's what we want to discuss today. So tell us a little about yourself and what you're involved in, what you're doing. Oh, I think I need three hours. Three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. You, you've been a very busy man. Uh, uh, besides um, being married to a beautiful wife and um, having nice, beautiful children that um, value the work that dad does. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> first and foremost, I would like to say um, I did my part as an educator. Yeah. I was in the classroom for, for 14 years. I uh, produced some of the um, one of some of the most amazing people that I know now. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, as an educator, you get to know what work you have done when you see the people that you have um, you brought up. Yeah. And then, they, of course, they sometimes make you look old. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but um, when I left um, the Department of Education. After my 14 years in the classroom, uh, I joined an organization called CJCP, standing for Center for Justice and Crime Prevention. Okay, and it's something that um, was a passion to me. Well, while I was still an educator, uh -huh. I used to be in charge of uh, the boys' dormitories. Okay. Making sure that they were safe, uh, you know, we put in school, they, they, they escape, they go out, you drink beer and sort of you know, things like that. So, um, so I used to be in charge of making sure that I put order in, in that area. Okay. So I, when I left and joined CJCP, uh, they took me in for a program that was called Shaisega. Yeah. Meaning, uh, it's a Tsonga word meaning be safe. Be safe, yeah. So what I was doing is I was training educators I was training um, communities, I was training um, churches as well mm -hmm. uh, in issues of school safety. Okay. That is what you, the schools should do in order to stop, uh, to stop issues of violence in the schools. Okay. Like I, said, I was mainly concerned about violence. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I was a facilitator there. I also did some research work there mm -hmm. um, with CJCP mainly on the use of uh, ICT. Mm -hmm. You know, these days, um, learners use all sort of um, uh, ICT for, for bullying, for, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. for, for perpetrated violence, for, for issues of pornography, issues mm -hmm. of that. so that's what I was looking at, that's what I was actually tasked to do. Okay. That took me all, all over South Africa mm -hmm. and beyond. If I went even went as far as Zambia, mm -hmm. dealing with issues of what we, of what we call peace education, mm -hmm. designed material for for for, for peace education, mm -hmm. and then um, when I came back, I joined an organization called um, Young in Prison South Africa, okay. yeah, yeah. where I was dealing with uh, young people in conflict with the law that we sometimes call juvenile delinquents. It's an insulting <laughs> way, by the way. Yeah, they are the educators. Yeah, yeah, so they're called uh, young people in conflict with the law. In conflict with the law. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so um, I was working in prison in Cape Town. We were in all the prisons uh -huh. uh, dealing with young people. We were incarcerated. 
in, including uh, what's this the, the prison in, in Cape Town the big one Cosmo Cosmo oh yeah yeah Cosmo yeah. your Goodwood your Brantley all those, all those those prisons yeah yeah we're working with young people there mm -hmm. um doing rehabilitation mm -hmm. reintegration and then a bit of advocacy as okay. well although we didn't have much bad uh, progress on that one then um uh, when I left CJCP when oh, I'm in mean, young in prison I started my own company called Moving Dot Moving Dot okay mm -hmm. tell us about that what do you do Moving Dot does almost um, everything that I, I used to do now I combine school safety and uh, work, working with young people in conflict with the law okay so what I do is uh, I travel all over training educators also mm -hmm. training sometimes I do work with parents as well especially where drugs are involved okay and where okay. violence is involved but mm -hmm. where um we have got the young people when they come out of prison mm -hmm. most cases they are faced with a criminal record they're faced with uh, issues of uh, subsistence they're faced with issues of reintegration getting the family to accept them mm -hmm. so all those things i do work with some families that say look we've got this young man or this young lady we've got these problems are failing to, to help them so i come in and help Mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. but now what i've been what we've been busy with is uh training on drug testing okay. so what the schools are doing is um they are going back to saying uh instead of picking up the learner and say i think the learner is on drugs mm -hmm. what we do we say don't just assume test the learner okay. and once we have tested the learner now that the the government is actually given um the parents in the schools the leeway to go ahead and test and to it. Test it. Uh -huh. yeah. so then afterwards we then work with the family or the school to find ways of helping the young people remember um testing the learner mm -hmm. is not to criminalize the learner mm -hmm. testing the learner is so that we know where to start from when we are helping the learner. okay okay just like at home we feel for the young the young men that you don't trust and you, you don't really see what's happening in their life what we, the most important thing is to test the learner then you have evidence to say you are actually taking substance and this is the thing then from there you, you start walking a journey with them towards okay. recovery okay yeah. very interesting so looking at our continent africa because we're looking at how we can rebuild our continent rebuild the dignity the wealth the economic empowerment of our of our of our continent one of the key factors that we are learning is the relationship between the quality of education in a country and the level of prosperity countries that have higher literacy and better quality education have less crime and also have higher quality of living in terms of the economic environment now based on your experience do you think we, in africa we do have a a situation where uh, drugs are a major issue um, violence learner to learner uh, learner to teacher teacher to learner uh, gender-based violence do you think these are real issues that we need to have dialogue about from from k to cairo Definitely, the way you summed it is, is, is excellent. But as you were speaking, also I, um, I I I was thinking of something. I believe besides us having those issues, especially um, like issues of violence in the school, we mm -hmm. do have them, plenty of them. Mm -hmm. uh, some time ago, when I was in Limbo, I think it's ten or so years ago, mm -hmm. I was telling some educators, saying, you know what? As if we continue the way we are going, mm -hmm. we are going to get to a time where teachers will have to request bulletproof vests before they go to school. <laughs> and in America, it's like that. Exactly. And it, it, it's like that. And, and in Britain, all those things that we we are seeing when when we are not seeing them. Mm -hmm. So now, when I look back and I say, they say, because of the issue of drugs, now I can go, I, I remember sometime I went as far as deep down rural Limpopo, Manjodonga. Mm -hmm. That's the first time when I came against like uh, uh, across cocaine. I had never seen cocaine in the rural areas. Cocaine. Cocaine in the rural in areas. The rural Who's area. bringing it? That's an uh, interesting question. But <laughs> <laughs> What's happening is, um, you know, the, the story of the man in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Who saw who discovered a rich piece of land mm -hmm. and sold everything that he had and mm -hmm. went and bought that land? Mm -hmm. Sometimes what's happening is that uh, what is happening in our schools, the drug dealers, mm -hmm. the, the the perpetrators, even the people that run prostitution rings, mm -hmm. they've actually identified the schools as fatal grounds. 
But Whoa. as educators, as parents, sometimes we we haven't seen that. Mm -hmm. So the good thing about it uh, 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 that, uh, that I might say at uh, uh, this moment is that Africa has got the solution for the entire world. Okay. Okay. Can I explain myself? I'm, I'm, I'm already interested. Mm. I want Africa, to hear this. In Africa, we still have uh, um, a strong family fabric. Okay. That we are sometimes losing by in, in inheriting certain values that come from Africa, that come out or that come if I can say outside of Africa. For example, as old as I am, if my mother says sit down and behave, I sit down. Yeah. You don't find that in many many, many cultures. Mm -hmm. Our young people, what they need, they need somebody who they, they we have something in the inside of us mm -hmm. that listens. Because when I'm dealing with young people who are involved in traps and stuff like that, sometimes when you begin to talk to them, you see that this this person did not actually get somebody who spoke to them according mm -hmm. to who they are. Mm -hmm. We speak to our children according to what we see in the books or in television. We don't Whoa. speak to them according to who they are. Uh -huh. And the day we arise and parents and speak to them according to who they are, we will win them back. And mm -hmm. that's one thing that we have in Africa, our culture. Mm. So, so mm. From, um, what I'm picking up now is if we are able to marry the fa a strong family culture, mm -hmm. strong family ethos mm -hmm. with strong educational foundations, mm -hmm. we will be able to raise up young people that are more solid, which is probably what would in, uh, cause an increase mm -hmm. in the number of uh, young people in conflict with the law. <laughs> there we go, got it right, I got it. <laughs> young people in conflict with the law mm -hmm. is primarily because there was already issues at home. Exactly. A, a disintegration of a connection and not being able to hear the voice of authority in a parent. Mm -hmm. so, so as an expert, you are, you, are, you are telling us that it's important for us to prioritize family. True. If education is going to work well, true. Wow. We don't. Wow. If, we, if we separate the, the two, then we're in trouble. There was an interesting question that was raised a few sessions ago, mm. um, and here's here's the, the the conversation we had. Mm. That it's interesting that we have a minister who focuses on women mm. and the youth, mm -hmm. but we have no minister for family. Mm -hmm in government, in parliament, there's no minister of family. Mm -hmm. What do you think about having a minister of family or somebody whose focus is on building families, investing into families, instead of just building women on one side, which creates an imbalance because now the men, and men are more prompt, predominant, I'm sure, in terms of numbers in prisons, mm -hmm. and those that are in conflict with the law, predominantly, again, it's going to be your young men <laughs> that are taking the drugs, drinking, smoking and then finding themselves having hit someone killed someone stolen something then they get incarcerated so from your perspective is are there steps that we can take in terms of rebuilding the family because I'm seeing that the relationship between family and education some thank you for, for, for bringing up that some time I some, some a long time ago when I was in Eastern Cape I remember it was a, a place called um, um, it was Beacon, Beacon Bay, non Pomelele in Beacon Bay. Mm -hmm. I happened to work with an organization called FAMSA, mm -hmm. which is an organization that deals with the family. Okay. Um, it was amazing how this organization was struggling to bring order to the family. Mm -hmm. And when I began to read further, I found that uh, the difference, the, the problem that we are having is that the family is under attack and the devil attacks the family. He knows if he attacks the family, mm -hmm. he is one. Mm -hmm. Because what's happening is if there is a minister of family who works towards building the family together, mm -hmm. what's going to happen is that we are going to have everybody under check. At the present moment, we've got children who are like loose cannons because there's no family. Mm -hmm. They neither belong to the father or belong to the mother. Whoa. Okay. And then the other thing that makes things worse is that um, uh, I work from an NGO uh, by perspective. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that sometimes we go with these things according to where the money is for funding. Mm -hmm. Mm, 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 if I mm. come and say I want um, to, to start an NGO, that works with family, mm -hmm. which is a noble idea, everybody likes, but sometimes we don't seem to look at 
um, the impact that it's going to have on the people. Because all these people, the young people who are mentoring women, working, all those, this, most of them, they are doing it because they don't have a respect of a family structure. Yeah. If they had a family structure and they are accountable to somebody within the family, you know what? Mm -hmm. You can disappoint anybody in the, in the outside world, but it's difficult to disappoint a mother. Yeah. So if there is a family, the family is together, the fathers are together, the, 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 the mother and the building, we find that all these things won't have a lot of problems here. But the challenge is, if we set up that, uh, that ministry, for example, mm -hmm. uh, we, the question is, where will be the funding coming from? So, so the one who's paying the piper is calling the tunes sure. and they call the agenda for what is to be done. Exactly. I want to ask a, a, a controversial question. Mm. Um, and, uh, well, not controversial, but very interesting. Uh, you, I, I had another conversation with a different person, mm. and they were saying uh, programs that came on our television uh, or media platforms, mm. like I think it was Yizo Yizo, uh -huh. which focused on crime. It's very old. <laughs> <laughs> it focused on, on glorifying the villain. Mm -hmm. So the villain now looked like... I'm a young man, I'm in school, I'm growing up in school and I watch years or years, I see this guy who's got the gun, who's got the cool mushesh or the nicest car, and that becomes my hero. Mm -hmm. So there was a sudden influx in the amount of crime based on what we, the content we were consuming. Mm -hmm. what's, what's your comments on content, on television, social media? You mentioned the issue of pornography. Now that there's a whole lot of access on phones, what's what's the contribution on the content, media content that we're consuming in relation with dysfunction in our education, dysfunction in our moral values, and increase in crime, violence? I mean, right now the big buzz talk is gender-based violence. Where are people finding the concept of actually slapping a woman, cutting a woman, cutting her into pieces, and throwing her into a, a pit toilet, and all these gruesome crimes? that we're seeing what what do you think because I'm, I'm looking at the math here and I'm saying two plus two is four if we change our content mm. we can change the outcome what, what are your thoughts um, and that is something that, uh, that I have been fighting for the past eight no 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 not eight years since 2008 mm -hmm. that's one thing that we've been fighting starting with your issues of uh, wrestling mm -hmm. starting uh, from wrestling going on you know what we have made um, television make or create an impression that murdering somebody is just as easy as an episode on, on television. Mm. So our kids, they are used to seeing blood on the on television. We try by all means to make blood look real on mm. television. Mm. They're seeing blood. No, there's, for example, there's another problem where programs say, uh, you see a thousand ways to die. Mm. I watched that program one day, and I, I, I uh, you know, I could see that, that that's a demonic program. I don't know, maybe I've never it. watched it. Should I look for it, or should I stay safe? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have normalized an abnormal situation. Wow. And the child, the problem that we're having is that our children assimilate that information. Yeah. When I was young, I remember the first time I saw a, 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 a dead person, somebody was, was knocked down by a car. Mm -hmm. And that experience traumatized me for about three. Even today, when I think about it, I can feel it, mm -hmm. how I felt. But our kids can just watch somebody dying and stuff, and actually go and video film whatever is happening. Yeah. We've made them get used to that. And then what happens that when they perpetrate it, they only realize later that actually this was not a movie, this was a real thing. Mm. That's why sometimes some of these young people, when they have met at people and stuff like that, look at it and say, it was stupid. It was this person, when they killed this person, they didn't even think before they killed the person. They mm. only begin to think after ourselves, what am I going to do with the body? What am I going to do with it? Then you see, even in the way they try to cover the thing, you can tell that mm. this person did not think, you acted out of emotion, and, and the other thing was because he knows he can do it, because he has got ways of how it can be done. Mm. So, mm. media content is very important. Mm. And what has happened now is that we are living in two worlds, ourselves and our children, and, our, and the, young, the young people that are coming yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens is that these young people have gone deep into the ICT. 
Mm -hmm. And then, for us, we have stayed, be, stayed behind. Some of the behavior that these young people exhibit, they come from this world that they have entered into, which we call the cyberspace, yeah. and acquire all these bad habits. And then when they come out, we have to deal with them, but we don't understand where, where, where they get all these things. Mm -hmm. Because most of us, like I always say, uh, the older generation, we are technologically innocent. <laughs> Hey. Let me not offend people. Uh, no, no, Charlie, you know, we, don't know. Okay. we don't know <laughs> political correctness. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really know what's happening in technology. In uh, some time ago, we did um, a study with fa with Facebook mm -hmm. on the use of um, internet or phones and stuff like that. We came up with a, 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 a booklet called Digital Parenting. Mm -hmm. Digital parenting is a, it was a it was a booklet that is meant to teach parents on how to monitor the behavior of their children online, even if you yourself are not online. Okay. And so so that is very key. The, the, wow. I mean, that's where we are going. Wow. To. Yeah, now, yeah, 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 yeah. Our bullying. It's is now cyber bullying. Cyber bullying. Uh -huh. And in most cases, the the police cannot go there. Mm. to prevent. They only go when a crime has been committed. Mm. Parents, can, we cannot go there also, because kids have go out there, they have, they have Because here yeah, I am, I'm in South Africa, and my child is being bullied online by somebody who is in another country, whose jurisdiction means it, who do we blame? Facebook, Instagram, or whatever platform it is? It's and they won't tell you. Yeah. yeah. You know why? Uh -huh. If they tell you that somebody is bullying me on one line, you will take away the gadget where they, that, the, the way they are accessing the bully. Sure. So they will weigh the options. Should I tell him that I'm being bullied and lose the phone? Or should I uh, try and hold on to the bullying and, and fight it myself? Mm -hmm. So most cases what they do, they try and fight, and then what happens? They end up being the bully themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So really, television content, uh, sometime when I was um, working in Rivonia, I used to, you know, some when you don't watch soapies. Mm -hmm. So one day I'm in a taxi, these people are talking about KT, you know, generations. Yeah. So I thought they were talking about somebody really alive. So, you know, KT, what, 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 and I'm asking myself, who is this kid? You're a character and generation. But the way they were talking about it, it's like somebody that... It was so intense that you almost wanted to pray for Katie. <laughs> Come on, let's agree in prayer and believe that Katie will be delivered from this <laughs> That wow. goes to show how powerful television is. Yeah. But the movies that we make. Mm -hmm. uh, but the bad thing, the, the bad thing, if I can say, is that uh, the bad news sale. Yeah. Good news don't. Mm. So what happens is that even if you are you you want to be an actor, mm. you find that you get more reviews if you are a bad actor. Mm. Good actors don't really get sure. reviews. Yeah. Interesting. In closing, I want to ask a very mm. I play this this beautiful game. Mm. Here we are, we're at the convention center mm. and we have fifty-four presidents or heads of states mm. coming into this room mm. with their minister of education mm. and a couple of their people that are in the education center in their countries. Mm. And the MC announces we're going to call Mr. Zamani Jovo to come and address the 54 heads of states from, from Cape to Cairo and give us wisdom on what to do with our education system in order to transform our continent and build mega economies. What would you tell them? <laughs> I also, <laughs> I also requested how. <laughs> no, you only have five minutes. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. What I have learned is that education, we sometimes separate education mm -hmm. and take out education from the context of the community. Mm -hmm. That's where we make a mistake. Yeah. That's why we end up having what I sometimes call educated vegetables. Mm -hmm. Somebody who is educated. He has got degrees, he has got everything, but that person cannot function in society with you, together with other people. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because we, we would think of education as feeding the brain with books and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Education is not like that. Education is creating somebody who is able to bring in solutions to the community or the world where they, they live in. Mm -hmm. And also being an asset and being able also to impact the other people around them positively. Education so, with a purpose. I like exactly. that. I like that. So what I would say is there are certain things that need to be put in place. Uh -huh. One of them is the issue of creating 
making sure that there is a culture that is respected. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The other thing is the issue that the, 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 the schools must be safe places where people are free or young people are free to express their talents, mm -hmm. to express their full... You know, we don't want to create people that are the same, that are similar. We don't want to create stooges. Mm -hmm. People like gifted differently. Mm -hmm. So when we bring in education, that's what something that uh, that that should be looked into. When when I, when I was at school, I was looked at uh, somebody who was also mathematically innocent, mm -hmm. but I did pass my mates anyway. <laughs> but what was what? what, what I'm what, still what, innocent. But, <laughs> <laughs> but what, what 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 happened is that it made me feel less of an individual because mm -hmm. I wasn't excelling in mathematics. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So what, what happens is that if we look at the learners in country in our countries, look at young people and try to bring out that which is in the inside of them, oh, that what yeah. is deposited oh, in the inside yeah. of them, without making them feel guilty that I am not mathematically sound, mm -hmm. we, will, we will get a solution. Mm -hmm. We will get many solutions. You know, I, I've known some people that were not good in maths at school. But are doing very well in, in communities and societies now, mm -hmm. and they are changing the world. And while the people who are mathematical genius, they're just drinking beer and being educated rich mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So what I would say, I would say, Africa needs to rise to come to a time where we view education according mm -hmm. to the individual, not according oh, to the standards that have been set oh, by somebody oh, else. Drop the mic. <laughs> that's it. I mean, that's beautiful. Sorry, mm -hmm. continue. Pick up the mic again. <laughs> the moment we begin to uh, to do that, we will begin to bring out the best out of each and every individual. Mm -hmm. I have got three kids, and what happens? I have noticed something. Three of them, they are differently gifted, mm -hmm. and if I try to treat them with the same paint them with the same brush, I will lose. What you yeah. ever got is put in the, in, yeah. in the on the inside of yeah. you. Yeah. The challenge that I'm here for Africa is who sets the educational standard? Good question. That's my question. Who, who sets the educational who, who, who standard are we out there to meet here? Mm -hmm. Because I feel if I I win, if I compete against myself, yeah. that way I will never lose. But if I begin to compete against somebody who is also competing against somebody who is also competing against somebody, what happens? We are competing against somebody that we are all competing against somebody that we don't even know. Wow. It's easy for me to write a book and say, hey, I, I, I wasn't sleeping for, for so many days doing this and that and this and that. Even Then somebody reads my book and I'm successful now. They think if we, for them to succeed is for them not to sleep for those hours. Maybe mm. for them to succeed is to sleep for many hours and then they write a book <laughs> to say I slept for 30 hours. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on. Hey, I like that, I like yeah. that. I like that. And, and definitely this is a conversation that we need. Africa needs this. I, I, I was talking to, uh, to somebody the other day and they were saying, you know, we cry about uh, that the education model we're using was introduced by our colonizers. Mm -hmm. And we've had the opportunity in, in Africa, in South Africa particularly, mm -hmm. to build, I think, two new universities that came up recently. Mm -hmm. But we just took the same model that existed and implemented it in the new universities. Mm -hmm. So we are we not creative enough to say, let's implement a model of education in a, in a tertiary institution mm -hmm. that's going to produce the kind of leaders we want, the kind of people we want, the kind of uh, ethos and culture we want. So we are just complaining about things that we're not willing to change. Exactly. Exactly, that's very true. Sure. Some time, some time ago, we, as CJCP, we started a course that I'm now resuscitating. Mm -hmm. It's called Crime Prevention Management. Mm -hmm. I'm now re resuscitating because CJCP has had problems, so um, we are offering it as moving dot. Okay. Uh, this is the only course of its kind in Africa, if not in the world. Mm -hmm. I think the people who graduated from that course will, should be less than 50 now. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it, you know, this course deals with preventing crime before it happens wow but what now we're talking <laughs> now we're talking that's, <laughs> that's better than than trying to correct it later 
than criminology, trying to study criminals and say means. And stuff. while you're studying it, you become a criminal yourself. <laughs> <Okay. Yeah. laughs> you begin to, we begin to even understand why criminals did something. Then when you come to a time where you understand why somebody made that somebody, then there's a problem. Mm. Because in other words, we are justifying that. So when we did that uh, the, that course, we it, it's a very good course. People did it. They, they will agree with me that it's a very good course. Mm. But uh, we've been struggling to get sponsors. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it deals with that uh, preventing crimes before crime before it happens. It's a, it's a very good course, an intense one. So I am taking it back and they back into the universities. And the other thing that I'm doing also, I'm taking um, your school safety. Mm -hmm. We we now what we are doing, we are going to schools and taking out educators and training them on school safety. Mm -hmm. But my idea is, let's why can't we train the educators while they're still training to be educators? We train them on school safety so that when they come out, Brilliant. they are already equipped instead of us taking them out of the class. That's it. That's so it. those are the two projects that I'm working on right now. Wow. I believe uh, when 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 I when they start when this COVID thing is over and when it starts, uh, universities are gonna see a great improvement. Wonderful. <laughs> where, where can people get in touch with Zaman? Where can they get in touch with Moving Dot? Uh, what platforms can we find you on? Uh, Moving Dot mainly is on um, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. We've got our website also. Mm -hmm. www.moving.ca.co.za okay. but they can also contact me on my for cell number mm -hmm. and uh, but almost our website is rich okay with everything that the person might need. so that's moving.co.za mm -hmm. so dot is d-o-t moving d-o-t <laughs> don't put two dots okay <laughs> it's moving dot dot co dot z <laughs> there's another platform again okay We've got an NGO that we started okay. to involve. To involve. Yes, this two is as in T O. Two, two as in numbers, numeral. Okay. One two. two. Yeah. One two. Okay. So it's two mm -hmm. involve. Yeah. Two okay. involve. Two involve. This Very one. Cool. This one deals mainly with um, young people in conflict with the law. Okay. And uh, it also works with um, the, the the older prisoners. Mm -hmm. We are helping those people that um, are in prison mm -hmm. and they've got a high risk of reoffending when they come out of prison. Okay. So what we okay. do, we identify them while they're still in prison, mm -hmm. we start working with them while they're still in prison so that when they come out, they find structures that will make sure that they didn't, don't reoffend. Re mm -hmm. Well, there are some people that you know that if, if this one, the, the time for him to come out of prison is, is maybe two or three months time. Mm -hmm. But you can tell that this person is not reformed at all. Wow. When they come out, they are bound to come back. So what we're saying, we're saying, um, let's create a platform where when they come out, we already have a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When they are outside, then we are able to work with them at, 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 at that level. Oh, brilliant. So we, we call it, the, or the thing is called integrated offender management. No, sounds integrated funny. offender management. Yes. There, you've got it. <laughs> so that's to involve.co.za? Yes, yes. To involve.co.za and moving dot dot co dot za you can get information on how you can get involved how you can become a sponsor how you can help how you can make a difference in your school in dealing with the issues of crime in dealing with issues of drugs and substance abuse in bringing reformation and also getting involved in preventing crime before it happens one of the most interesting statistics that we have about africa which we have in the book here i found this quite quite interesting is that Africa has at the moment 12% of the global population and will, will be home to 31% of the global po population by 2050. So Africa is the youngest continent mm -hmm. and it is the continent with the greatest guarantee of a future moving forward in terms of population growth. Mm -hmm. That means if we don't manage the family and the education sector well now, we will have a multiplied problem within the next 10, 20, mm -hmm. 30 years so we need to act now in order to prevent so we need thousands of people going through this course thousands of educators going in fact millions right across from Cape to Cairo going through the course that focuses on preventing crime rather than trying to find remedies after crime has been committed because it's more complex then Thank you so much, Pastor Zamani. It, it has been so informative and empowering and much clearer about what we need to do in terms of our education and in terms of uh, getting things done. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you so much. Hey, Thank God you. bless you.
God bless you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on 52 Days of Rebuilding the Walls of Africa. This is Dr. Tich Tanyaniwa. We are so excited about what God is doing right across from Cape to Cairo. Our continent has a bright future. So put on your shades because the brightness may just affect your eyes. Let's go into the future with hope, with expectation, with faith, and with confidence that Africa is the center of God's plan for this season that we're in. Thank you so much. Join us again tomorrow, and we'll have another great time. God bless you. Could it be that the church has missed the plot by thinking the Old Testament is irrelevant? Would God work so hard with the patriarchs of old and the prophets to write in a book for future generations and then say it is useless? Perhaps the better questions we need to ask are, what secrets are encoded in the Torah that would equip modern generations to master their economies? Are they secrets hidden in the life of Abraham that would enable a business to become a blessing to a generation? Was the African continent born for oppression and slavery? Dr. Tich Tananyua has had several encounters with God that have moved him to writing the Wealth Mastery Trilogy. Three powerful books that are loaded with biblical evidence that God wants you wealthy. In these encounters, Dr. Tich Tanyaniwa has invested over 7,000 hours of research going through the Torah to unravel the ancient secrets of the Hebrew nation. The books will enable the reader to discover how to break free from financial and economic slavery, wisdom to manage personal finances and establish generational wealth. How to use your wealth to change the world for the good of mankind. God's plan has always been to establish the earth as a colony of heaven. As in the words of the Messiah, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. These three books will bring you back to the understanding of the original purpose for wealth and position you to be a world shaker. From housewife to CEO, from street vendor to president, from children to business leaders, you need to get this wisdom not just in your head, but in your spirit. Prepare to go on your greatest journey ever. Be a world shaker. From housewife to CEO, from street vendor to president, from children to business leaders, you need to get this wisdom not just in your head, but in your spirit. Prepare to go on your greatest journey.